Welcome to Chem 327, Experimental Physical Chemistry, and today we're going to discuss the lab notebook. This is a requirement for you in this course, and you have to keep records in your lab notebook. We are going to discuss record keeping in general, because this is important, not just for your lab notebook in this course, but when you join a research group or when you work in industry, you need to be able to keep good records. Now, I don't care what your notebook looks like. It can be your standard lab notebook. It can be something you just pick up from the corner store or from Staples, or it could be really fancy. But the important thing is it cannot be something in which you can remove pages. So no springs, no perforations, no binders. And this lab notebook, the role of this is to be able to keep technical records, your experimental results, and the things that are included in them. So let's go ahead and take a look why we need to keep a good. You have to keep a good record and that means that the data has to be understandable and should have enough information to indicate uh, the conditions that are surrounding this data because this serves as a source of information for yourself as well as for others, for your supervisor, perhaps for a future publication. You can also include in your lab notebook the thoughts and the ideas on the project, the explanation on why you're taking this data. Uh, the lab notebook, the records that you keep in it, can serve as ideas for later work. And it's also important for you to record not just the experiments that work, but also the things that didn't, because you don't want to have duplication, because you would have forgotten already what worked and what didn't work. You have to note this all down. And Think of the person who is going to continue a project. They should have enough information in that lab notebook to help them continue the project. Your lab notebook constitutes the legal record of what you've been doing in your lab. Uh, later, we will be discussing intellectual property and patents. Your lab notebook at this point constitutes your intellectual property. And if you were to obtain a patent, you need to have the record in your book in order to support your application for a patent. Now, you should really try to write with good ink in a good paper because if you have a patented uh, idea that is based on this notebook, that notebook has to last 23 years after the patent issues. So let's just take a look at an example of a lab notebook. Let's take a look at an example of a couple of pages from a lab notebook. Can you guess who owns these? Note the experiments that were being done, narrated in detail. These are notebooks uh, that you can find at the University of Toronto Library. Uh, the experiments that we are very proud of. Almost a hundred years ago now, Banting and Best saved the world with the discovery of insulin. Now, you can see that 100 years later, we can still read a notebook. And I encourage you strongly to take a look at our heritage at the University of Toronto uh, at this website. Now, let's continue on the legal e issues regarding your lab book. First of all, there should be no erasures, no writing over. If you make a mistake, put the line across to cross it out and write below or write above. But don't erase what you had made a mistake on. If there's any dispute, if your notebook is used in a patent, if there's any dispute in, in the patent, then your lab notebook may become essential. Keep this in mind because, you know, your notebook may become public. So if I were you, I would not be drawing or writing unnecessary things there that they would embarrass you later. Uh, generally, if you're working in a research lab, the lab director will be inspecting your lab books periodically. Now note, if you work for a company, you do not own the lab book. You can ask for a copy, the same way in a research lab, you do not own the lab book, it remains in the lab, you can ask for a copy and you can take your copy home if allowed. Now what should your lab book include? So first of all, there has to be page numbers. If you buy a notebook without page numbers, you should write down a number for every page. Then leave a blank page at the beginning to put in the table of contents. 
which you can write after you've filled up your notebook or as you go along through filling up your notebook. As I said earlier, there are no torn or missing pages. Every page should be intact in that notebook. If you make a mistake, put a line through, put a cross through. It has to be written in ink and no whiteouts. There has to be a date at least on every page, probably more than one date on a page if needed. Okay, something that we rarely practice in the research lab, but when you go to industry, this is important, that there are two signatures on every page. Your signature and a person who uh, attests to it, that this notebook, that these things were written in your notebook. Um, in the past, it was important to have daily entries on the book, and, and so if you are missing some time, uh, if you're absent or if you haven't put in an entry in a while, you usually would explain it. This is less important these days, but just make sure there are dates in your notebook. Now, of course, sometimes you print out data or you print out a, a graph from somewhere and you like to tape it to your book, and that's perfectly fine. But anything that you tape has to be signed and dated. Okay. So, signatures on your lab book. On every page, there has to be two signatures, the person who performed the experiment and the witness. Both must be dated. And here's an example at the bottom of the signature of the person who recorded and the person who read. Uh, the name of the person who developed or invented the experiment or the process is one of the signatures, and the other one is the witness. And it's important that the witness attests to it, that they understand the experiment. And these signatures must be done properly. And as I said, typically we're not very strict about how this is done, but it's a good practice for you to get used to it because when you start working for something crucial, for something that may lead to patents and may lead to disputes, this becomes very important. So here's an example of a lab notebook that is used in, uh, in companies and in some research labs, and you can see that there's room for, here's the page, uh, there's room for signatures at the bottom. Uh, there's room that indicates continuity from page number to page number. Okay, let's give you another example of a lab notebook. Here's another example of a famous notebook. Take a look closely and think about what important discovery is being chronicled in these pages. What's the experiment that's being described? You can perhaps get a clue from the names that are listed right here on the, on the right page. They must be so excited because it's Christmas Eve and they're doing this experiment and recording it well. Note that there's a date, uh, there's a signature from somebody who read and understood these pages. You're right. This is the notebook that chronicled the amazing discovery that led to a revolution in the devices that we have today. This is the plan and the experiment carrying out the plan for the transistor. And I believe this notebook must have been by John Bardeen. So if you have a blank space in your notebook, it has to be crossed out with lines so, that, so as to prevent addition of new content. If there are gaps in dates, they typically are explained as to why are there missing dates in the notebook. So if you had a problem with an entry in the book, don't, don't change it right there. You can put a cross or put a reference to say go to page such and such and make a new entry. Some practical issues, some practical issues. You need a table of contents for your notebook so you leave a couple of pages at the beginning so you can put them as you go along. Uh, you, sh you can cross-reference various pages. This is particularly important if you're doing more than one project. Now, you try to document everything, successes as well as failures. You can write down your thoughts on why you're doing a particular experiment. Try to document as much as you can because sometimes when you're doing something new, 
uh, you don't exactly know what's the most important thing to write. But, it, but it's important that it reminds you, it tells others, and it helps those who will continue your project. So just to recap, just to recap, your lab notebook is pretty much about your technical work, the data, the observations, the conclusions, but don't forget to add your guesses and your thoughts. And maybe you'd like to have plans for future work and some ideas, technical or not technical, uh, your uh, arguments about things. But beyond that, your lab notebook is also your place to record relevant meetings and discussions with others what you had given to others, what you have received, if somebody came up with an idea that, uh, and they told you about it, somebody disclosed information, or you disclosed information. These are things that are important to keep in your notebook when you are in a research or industrial lab setting. Uh, it's also important to put in inf records and information about projects of other people, as well as you, you may have other projects yourself.